Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And damn guys, has it been a rough day for crypto? A lot of crazy news, a lot of crazy announcements, a lot of price shoveling back and forward. I mean, XRP is now in the third position as it just took over USDT as well. It's just been insane. I mean, I've been looking at these charts for the last couple of hours and, and right now it's just really going berserk here it's, it's, it's completely crazy completely mental so let's talk about it all the question of today is when was the last time you sold some bitcoin was it this week let us know in the comment section down below and make sure you support the channel by pressing the like button and subscribing because it puts a smile on my face helps with the youtube algorithm and you get notifications so first of all analyst why Bitcoin market will get interesting after Thursday's is difficult to change. Now, I think to anybody out there who's ever really dove deeper into what Bitcoin is about, they know that difficulty has quite an important role in this whole network of ours. I mean, a very big part of Bitcoin is validating transactions, and with that comes proof of work also known as Bitcoin mining. And Bitcoin mining becomes so profitable because it is kind of simple to do, right? Well, no, right? It becomes so profitable because it's a certain difficulty. It's kind of like the other way around. Like, it's not like anybody can just mine some Bitcoin and it will never get harder or anything like that. No, it becomes increasingly more more difficult as there's more people on or really in, in different words it becomes more difficult as it needs to get i know that's a little bit vague but i think that's enough knowledge for now and since thursday the difficulty is going to be adjusting again yeah people are fearing of what may occur and this fear all comes because after the halving the whole network is working a little bit strangely people are, are finding their place in what's profitable what's not and and what to go for, and so the difficulty will change accordingly. Well, all right. Ever since Bitcoin halving on May 11th, investors have been fearing a widespread minor capitulation. A minor capitulation is an event in the crypto market when many miners of Bitcoin become unprofitable. This often happens due to one of three things. Price correction, a network difficulty adjustment, or a Brock block reward halving in becoming unprofitable miners are forced to liquidate the bitcoin they mined and mass to keep their lights on this forces the market much lower than it started and although this effect on prices has not been evident data shows that minor capitulation has begun yet again the thing is the crypto market has held strong and we might not see it as heavy as some are expecting it to be so yes right here right now is going on and on may 31st prominent bitcoin investor and commentator connor brown shared the data below as evidence that minor capitulation is starting it shows that over the past week addresses believed to be owned by miners have spent slash sold 673 more coins than they generated in the last days alone 279 access coins were sold showing bitcoin miners are trying to keep their operations afloat by liquidating their holdings to quote, this past week, miners have sold 673 more Bitcoin that were generated. We are seeing capitulation from inefficient miners, but prices are holding steady. What do you think happens when these miners are finally shaken out? Brown explained. Well, we don't really know what's going on quite yet, all right? It, it's holding a lot better than expected. Everybody's been saying that. And Thursday, difficulty adjustment, adjustment is going to be, you know, which, which might get all these people back in as it might not be as bad as it is right now after the difficulty adjusts for the better. Meet the U.S. Senate candidate who's invested in Bitcoin since 2013. Cynthia Lummis was the U.S. representative for Wyoming from 2019 to, or 2009 to 2017 and is now running for U.S. Senate. A budget hawk and founding member of the Freedom Caucus, or Caucus, she first bought Bitcoin in 2013 after a tip from her son-in-law, and she's been an advocate ever since. I think that's pretty damn cool, guys, if you think about it, coming from such an important individual. Uh, to quote, as long as a dollar-based digital currency is backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. as opposed to something more scarce, I don't think it can add value. I don't know where, who exactly that is from. Don't care, because, um, I mean, 
She's into it. I like, I like, I like. A mice go, OMG. Price surges following Tether integration. OMG is on a roll following its listing on Coinbase last month and its surprising airdrop for Ethereum holders. Omai's Go will now host the biggest stablecoin in crypto. OMG is not Ethereum killer. Vitalik on Tether. It's migration to OMG network. Well, basically, it's, it's a big deal to some. Personally, don't care too much about it. I don't like Tether. I don't like this integration yet. I mean, Tether is on most, right? I mean, it's on Tron. It's on uh, Ethereum as well. It's on most. And I don't know if they're doing a very, very big switch right now or if they're just doing another part, which is not going to be a big deal at all. So maybe they're in a full switch, though. It could be the pump follows an announcement from crypto exchange Bitfinex that its sister company Tether will now see stablecoin USDT integrated onto the OMG network. This will now enable Bitfinex users to make Tether deposits and withdrawals on OMG which according to the exchange will lower transaction costs and speed up confirmation times. We're committed to improving our service to better support, yada, yada, yada. Again, guys, this ain't going to change nothing for anybody in the world. It's just kind of bad that people are really, really, really heavily speculating on this because it's not a bullish thing at all. It's, it's going to make it cheaper for like such a small amount of individuals that I don't think it should have pumped at all because of this integration or this news. Cardano strengthens DC offering with two new appointments. Cardano have announced two senior appointments in its defined contribution team. David Byrne joins the head of DC platform, a newly created role with Cardano on June 1st, 2020. Cardano also announces the appointment of Stefan Lundberg as head of DC design, uh, the group for the group you can read more a little bit more about them on here, but I just wanted to let you guys know that they're working. And as I said before, it could really be that that Cardano turned on the freaking jets, guys. It's kind of looking like it. That like, like they've really, really gone up in terms of marketing and in terms of announcements. Ripple's ODL in Australia records new all-time high. So yes, guys, Australia. I mean, for Ripple, I believe all of the corridors are doing extremely, extremely good. But again, Australia as well here has now taken another all-time high. I told you guys earlier today that... Uh, Bit so, I believe, XRP to Mexican Peso was making a new all-time high, but also Australia, showing again that this liquidity we're talking about here is showing signs of improvements, is always continuing on to excel, and will most likely, you know, keep doing this for a very, very long while. And I'm pretty damn excited to see that, guys. Whew, I'm, I'm getting fired up a little bit just reading about this again. Ripple's CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, condemns racial inequality in the United States. And I don't know how far I can take this uh, on the YouTubes without it getting demonetized or without people getting really, really angry and sad and whatnot. Um, but yeah, BG, the CEO of the American tech company, which develops the Ripple payment protocol and exchange network Ripple, has publicly declared his strong support to the black community for the fight to break away from societal racism. Referring to the recent killing of the 46-year-old black man by the Minneapolis police officers on May 25th, Brad opined that there is no, or that there is need to be active against racism. He further went to state that although he can't feel the pain of the black people who have been meted out with different kinds of inhuman treatment, he believes that addressing the issue of racism is a matter of life and death. Yeah, I find that professionally said, to be completely honest, you know, saying he can't feel uh, the pain or anything like that, or he can't feel what they are feeling, in, in his words, that's pretty smart to say. We need to be proactively anti-racist presently and in the future and completely change the way that we see and support our communities of color. This is about life and death. We cannot stop shining a light on the deep-seated racism that the murders of Ahmadi Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and countless others represent. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor, Desmond Tutu. Yeah, I, I feel that. You know, guys, uh, to be completely honest, I don't know what you guys are thinking on that, but I agree with BG 100% right here. Um, I don't know if it's necessary to do anything. You know, I, I, I think here in the Netherlands, it's not as big a deal as in America, I would say. Um, I mean, it's still an issue. As I would say, it's still an issue at most places in the world, but it's not as big as an issue as it is in America, I would say. 
And also, people are acting very, very irrational at this point. And I'm wondering what the best course of action is as well, right? It's always difficult paths, difficult choices to make. Because I've been seeing videos all day, you know? And I'm like, guys, you know, we gotta, we gotta stand up for ourselves, I guess. But, you know, do, do it smartly. You know, don't overdo it. And, and think about what you're doing. Because I know it's anger. I know it's all in, in the motion. But you got to steer it in some way. Right? Because it, it, it all... I don't know. And then I've also seen a lot of theories about it all being for Trump's re-election. Uh, I've also seen some theories saying you got to separate them so they'll never unite for something bigger. I've seen a lot of different theories come by, which all make me think, you know, like, is this done from a higher-up perspective as well? Is this all done on purpose? Or is this all just... You know, uh, 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 an 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 ad, ad, adding whatever, whatever you call it, like a summation of more and more deaths upon deaths, which is making people more angry. You know, and um, now it's like the last kind of freaking straw. I mean, this is, happens every every so often, every couple of years, maybe let's say every half a decade. People just go completely berserk onto the streets and whatnot. But it's all about the result, right? And you got to think about what action causes what reaction. And in this case here, I don't know what we're doing by marching um, just plainly like this. Like, we're all saying Black Lives Matter, I know. But, um, you know, are people really listening? Are they taking it into themselves? Because all the people that are quote-unquote ignorant, them, you know, you, you can protest as much as you want, but they don't care. At least that's what I'm, I'm thinking about. So how can we really do something about it then is there anything crypto can do for it i don't really think so as well it's just something i have in my mind which i'm wondering what you guys think on the situation but maybe don't get too vocal on it just write a small little opinion down below um not putting my full opinion on there out there either uh just a little little part of it which is you know you got to be smart about everything and i'm wondering exactly what the best course of action is as i think it's a very very difficult subject you know as an no, I'm just I'm gonna leave it at that. The XP holders do not seem to have any interest in Brass's stand. In response to this call, some of the crypto members who are probably XP holders tried to draw the attention of the CEO to present state of Ripples' native currency. A particular Twitter user with the name Zen replying to Garling House asked, What about the pain of XRP holders? Which is a valid point, I guess. <laughs> uh some stated that they do not care about how much emotion the CEO displays, but are more interested in seeing XRP hit a new all-time high in the nearest future. I do get that, you know. There's going to be tons of people, I believe even maybe maybe half of the people watching right now as well, really don't care. You know, if you don't, that's completely on you, man. You know, everybody has their own thing. And if you don't care, you don't care. I can't I can't make you. And um, if you're more worried about the XRP price, you're, you're, you're right for mine so. And uh, thus... I don't think it's respectful, but I can understand. And all I can tell you is just skip through then, right? You just do your own thing and uh, maybe set your priorities to some degree somewhere. Because th this type of stuff makes you think as well, like, what is it all about? You know, what is life about? What is important to me? You know, what is family? What is, what is, what is race really? What it is, all, what is, what is it all about? It makes you, it makes you wonder, makes you think. And, um... At least it does for me. And especially when such a person I look up to, like Brad Garlinghouse, talks about it as well. It just makes me think, man. Like, why? But yeah, it's, it's 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 the way it goes. It's the way world works. Charts of XRP and top altcoins look trash. Here's what may come next. The Bitcoin bull case may be rapidly forming. But the charts of XRP and other top altcoins still look like trash, according to a top analyst. The analyst that made this assertion called the Bitcoin would bottom at 3200 in the middle of 2018 when the asset traded in the 8000s. This was an accurate prediction when the flagship crypto firming a macro low at 3150 just six months after the forecast. Now, I, I find that kind of vague as well. You know, we're talking about six months. This guy predicted something and six months later it went to that price. It's like I'm saying, yeah, we're going to get to $14,000. If that happens now, between now and six months, I'm a freaking god. You know, what if you made 14 other claims in that time? We're not tracking that, so who knows? Top altcoins still look like trash. Um, and again, to quote, I'm very wary of alts here on alts here. Very ugly daily candles forming on a lot of the majors. EOS, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, LTC, all look like trash and are likely going to have deeper sea waves and had lower highs starting forming here. 
XRP especially is primed to move lower. To quote again, XRP broke down from a yearly long range short from $2,200. Wouldn't be surprised to see this at $1,500 before June ends, he explained. Satoshi Nakamoto had outside cryptography help, says early Bitcoin dev. Could be, but it's something to think about as well. Satoshi Nakamoto sought help from expert cryptographers, which allowed him to make Bitcoin secure, says an early um, developer. That's something to think about. And last but not least, Taylor Swift's video director, and also from Bitney Spears and some others, turns into Bitcoin trader, and here's how it went. Well, basically, you start to trade crypto. He's really into it now. He's making a couple of bucks on it. Only like 450 he made in profit. But uh, he's only trading small amounts, and I think it's pretty cool because he's into Bitcoin. Um, as he also says here, if the P industry accepts it, you know, the tech is about to be mainstream. And that's something I can respect. That's something I think about as well. And I also tweeted that out today. But guys, since I put so much thought into it all uh, today, you know, about uh, <laughs> all of this stuff, and I don't want to occupy your minds too much, going to leave it at that. Let me know if I talk too much about some crazy stuff and you would like me to stay more on topic. Uh, this, then this is the last time I do it. Let me know and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody. And have a very, very nice day.